Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain two example problems on this Wien bridge. Uh, Wien bridge is used to measure the unknown frequency where we are measuring the frequency of the input sinusoidal signal and uh, we have calculated the frequency when we have taken the um, imaginary parts. Suppose if what happens if you take the real parts, real parts also we have equated, imaginary parts also we have equated in the calculation of Wien bridge. But when we go for imaginary parts equation, then we have got the unknown frequency formula directly and we didn't go completely about the real part equation. So in this uh, video, I am also going to explain and doing a problem also how this a real part helping us to determine the unknown components like capacitance and resistance. So let us go with the first problem, uh, this one. So where a wind bridge is given, so the wind bridge circuit consists of the following parameters so like R1 is equal to 4.7 kilo ohms and R2, uh, R2 is equal to 20 kilo ohms. See R1 this one is 4.7 kilo ohms and R2 value is given as 20 kilo ohms this one. C1 value is given which is of 5 nano farad, nano means 10 power minus 10 and C3 is equal to 1 nano farad, this is equal to 1 nano farad and R3 is equal to 10 kilo ohms, R4 is equal to 100 kilo ohms. So now each and every value is given, now you are asked to determine what is the frequency of the unknown input signal. So this one is the signal. Now for this one we need to calculate the frequency. Already we know the formula of the unknown frequency in the wind bridge oscillator that is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of R1 C1 R3 C3. Okay. Now substitute each and every value is there with us. So 1 by 2 pi square root of R1. 4.7 kilo into 5 nano into R3, 10 kilo into what about C3, it is 1 nano, okay. So if you simplify this, you will get the frequency value as 3.2, approximately 3.2 kilo hertz. This is the frequency of oscillations of this wind bridge oscillator or wind bridge circuit. Okay, it is about 3.283 kilohertz. Now, coming to the second type of problem, which is very important, where the unknown capacitance value and resistance value is asked. Find the equivalent parallel capacitance and resistance that causes a wind bridge to null with the following component values. What do you mean by this one? What do you mean by this question? Find the equivalent parallel capacitance and resistance. In the entire circuit of the wind bridge, only one set, one arm is having a parallel combination of resistance and capacitance. So by seeing the line itself, we can understand that he is going to ask the resistance and capacitance values which are having a parallel connection. Because if you don't mention the parallel connection, the R1, C1 values are also there, which are in series. Okay, there may be a conflict which one we have to consider. That's why it is given clearly that parallel capacitance and resistance. So, you are asked to calculate these two values. Okay. Now, also he said that that causes a wean bridge. Now, you are asked to calculate the values of these two. Causes, those values should make the bridge reading should be null with the following parameters okay reading should be null there is no deflection no deflection means when it is happening when the bridge is in balanced condition so simply or indirectly he is saying that you know, when the bridge is in balanced condition these are the values you need to consider and at that time you are asked to calculate r3 and c3 because we know the formula we uh, only during the bridge in balanced condition so uh, when I was explaining the Wien bridge, I have after Z1, Z4 is equal to Z2, Z3 simplification, uh, we have stopped at the real and imaginary parts. So we have taken completely imaginary parts and calculated the unknown frequency. But now it is the time to consider the 
real parts what happens and what about that uh, real part what happens if i take the real part into consideration so that value is very usefully here in the calculation of this unknown capacitance and resistance we have stopped where r2 is equal to r1 r4 if you go back you can uh, see how we have got this one in this previous video so r1 r4 by r3 plus c3 r4 by c1 okay so r4 r4 is there you can simply say it is r2 by r4 r1 by r3 plus c3 by c1 okay now what you, what is the value you are going to calculate c3 and r3 so c3 and r3 if you simplify this equation simplify this equation this one and as well as the imaginary part imaginary part equation already we know what is that imaginary part equation <coughs> and that is equal to omega square equal to 1 by <coughs> sorry r1 c1 r3 c3 so if you use these two equations in the simplification simplification you will get R3 formula as R3 is equal to R4 by R2 completely in terms of known values R1 plus 1 by omega square R1 C1 square. Okay, so that is equal to 100 kilo by R4 is given as 100 kilo ohms and R2. What is the value of R2? R2, it is gone here. R2 is nothing but how much it is given? 25 kilo ohms. 25 kilo ohms. So it is 25 kilo into what is the value of R1? That is 3.1 kilo plus 1 by omega square 2 pi f. What is f? 2.5 kilo whole square into R1. What is R1? 3.1 kilo into c1 square where is the c1 and how much it is c1 is given as 5.2 microfarad those two are cut here c1 is equal to 5.2 microfarad so that also substitute here 5.2 into 10 power minus 6 this is also c1 square so if you simplify this R3 value you will get it as 12.4 kilo ohms. This is the value of R3. Now, next problem is to calculate the value of C3. Calculate the value of C3. So, how to calculate C3? Again, using the same notation, simplify and you will get this formula. C3 is equal to <coughs> R2 by R4 into C1 by 1 plus omega square R1 square C1 square that is equal to so 25k substitute the values and R4 is nothing but 100 kilo into what is the value of C1? C1 is 5.2 microfarad divided by 1 plus 2 pi f whole square 2 pi f f is nothing but 2.5 kilo <coughs> into what is r1 3.1 kilo square into c1 is nothing but 5.2 microfarad whole square okay again if you simplify this you will get approximately 20 picofarads approximately its value is 20 picofarads okay so in this way the real parts can be used to determine the unknown capacitance and resistance values actually our aim is not to find the unknown capacitance and resistance values because the mean bridge is particularly meant for the calculation of 
unknown frequency of the input signal okay suppose any signal you are receiving but you don't know what is the amount of frequency but you know that it is in only audio frequency range so then definitely you can go for the uses of this wind bridge to calculate the unknown frequency of this in received signal in such a case we generally use this wind bridge but here there is also a possibility because we have the real part and imaginary part when we equate the bridge balance condition we have bothered about only the frequency during this uh, imaginary parts but using the real parts also we have one calculation that we can calculate the unknown values r3 and c3 you can calculate any of the parameters like c1 r1 r2 r4 or c3 r3 any of these four arm parameters with this notation so with the notation that is coming from the real part equivalence okay so in this way we can calculate the unknown values like frequency and any other parameter in through the use of wind bridge so this is more advantageous compared to the normal bridges like your Hayes bridge maxwell's bridge shearing bridge and any bridge what is the advantage of this one it calculates the unknown frequency and as well as unknown components like resistance or capacitance or any type of bridge any bridge component in the wind bridge okay but whereas the frequency measurement cannot be done with the help of the previous bridges what we have discussed so far okay so this is about wind bridge problems thank you